Hi listeners, stories have so much power and so does whoever controls the narrative. It is time that we dissect and analyze these stories. I am Vipul and this is Vogue Tales. Hi everyone, one troop in fairy tales that gets overshadowed by wicked stepmothers and orders not to unlock doors is folk medicine. There are obscure fairy tales and then there are obscure fairy tales. The Three Snake Leaves is a part of the Grimm collection and comes in the second category. And on that note, it's story time. Leaving home in order to earn his own way in the world a young man joins the army and acquits himself so impressively on the battlefield that the king thanks him personally, rewards him financially, and gives him an important position at court. This unexpected reversal of fortunes brings the young soldier into the sphere of the king's daughter, a woman who takes romantic ideals very, very seriously. Her condition for marriage is that whoever becomes her husband must vow that should she die, he will allow himself to be buried alive with her. Don't worry, it's an equal opportunity suicide pact. She is prepared to do the same should her husband die first. Perhaps unsurprisingly, she has not yet found a suitor who feels comfortable with that arrangement. But the soldier is bestarded and asks her hand anyway. For a while, all goes well, but then the princess falls sick and the reality of the situation hits home. When she dies, the king has a son-in-law taken down to the vault with her body and left there to join her in death. Though he loved the princess, the soldier is seriously regretting that promise. Still, when he sees a snake slips through a crack in the vault and approaches his wife's corpse, he reacts furiously determined to protect her memory. He slashes the snake into pieces. Shortly afterwards, a second snake emerges from the same hole, sees the body of the first snake and disappears, only to return with three leaves in its mouth. When it lays the leaves on the dead snake, it comes alive and together they vanish the way they came. The leaves remain. Don't look a gift snake in the mouth. The soldier snatches up the leaves and tries them on his wife. Sure enough, she wakes up, entirely alive. Between them, they make such a racket that the guards outside hear and the king is called down to see what's going on. The vault is, of course, unsealed. The royal couple are released and everything seems perfect once more. As a precaution against further mischance, though, the soldier gives the leaves to a loyal servant for safekeeping. And it's a good thing he does because there is a price to be paid for bringing back the dead. His wife is alive, certainly, but she is not the woman she used to be, and she has no love for the man who revived her. When the two of them set off on a sea voyage, back to the soldier's own country to see his father, she plots with the captain of the ship and throws her husband overboard. The ship is turned for home, leaving him behind to die. But her love isn't the only thing she's forgotten. The servant who saw it all lets loose a small boat, collects his master's body and revives him with the leaves. They then row at a ferocious speed back to the palace to tell the king all that's happened. He doesn't want to believe it could be true. When his daughter's ship returned to harbor, he has the soldier and the servant hide in the antechamber while he receives her and asks why she had returned so soon. She fakes grief, telling him that her husband took ill and died on the voyage, unwittingly proving the servant's claims. The king, who has already shown he will execute people he cares about for the sake of principle, has his daughter and the captain sent out to the sea in a ship full of holes and drowned. The End 
Folk medicine and its ties to rebirth is present in so many fairy tales. Taking advantage of some strange sounding object or substance that will miraculously heal. The water of life, the water of death, Rapunzel's tears, the blood of someone newly killed which will restore both the person and the others. The three snake leaves uses one of the strangest and most mysterious modes of reviving a dead person. Three leaves used by one snake to bring another back to life. The story is told in two halves, the first half being magic and the second half romantic and realistic. The language of the story clearly hints that we are meant to root for the soldier and condemn his wife. True, adultery and murder are not such pretty things. And yet I can't help but be curious what the connection is between her change of heart and desperate state in the second half of the story with her death and revivification in the first half. Fairy tale logic is so often two dimensional, but between the princess's return to life and her quote unquote change is where we can insert the knife and dig out something deeper. The princess is given ridiculous treatment by the narrative. The ending is a total downer and the only ones who come off really well are the devoted resurrectionist snakes. Give me a story about them. And on that note, bye for now. Let me know your thoughts on the story and our discussion by emailing me on woketalespodcast at gmail.com or through social media at woketalespodcast on Instagram and woketalespod on Twitter. And please rate, review, and like Woke Tales Podcast. And don't forget to subscribe so you can easily access our weekly stories. If you have any story recommendations or if you want to come dissect and analyze a story with me, give me a shout out on email or social media. Because whatever you do, keep dissecting and keep analyzing. <laughs> <laughs>